Once there was a man who spent many, many years doing brutal labor work. He would spend 12 hours a day digging ditches. One day, at the end of a very long, hot day of digging a massive ditch, he stopped to talk to the young man that was in the ditch with him. Know what I'm going to do when I get to heaven, he said. No. What? The young guy replied. I'm going to talk to Peter at the gates and ask for a mountain cabin on a clear blue lake. The cabin will have to have a front porch overlooking the lake and I'm going to request that the porch be equipped with a comfortable rocking chair. Really? said the young guy. And then I'm going to sit there for 10,000 years in the rocking chair. Man, the young lad said, that's a long time to sit there. And what you going to do after? The man replied, and then I'll start rocking. You're welcome. All right, with deer season just about here, let's go check the trail cams. Just wanted to move that one because it's kind of aiming at that uh, garage shelter we got there now. I have actually seen deer in between the trailer and the garage, but I'm gonna aim her up this way for now. Yeah, it's such a random freaking mess there. Just measure the actual water lines. Well, they are actual water lines. No, I mean, we, we should build a closet all through there. A closet? Before you go into somebody's room? No, the top closet I meant. Who well, we're going to. Honestly, you might be able to just use a 2 by 4 on the, the bottom here. Because yeah. it'll be an inch and a half. Yeah. I mean, that's freaking this shit. Look at Yeah. I don't know. Might have used two by fours. 
All right, so today is a very exciting day. I'm standing up here at the front of the property and behind me, you can kind of see there's a lane cleared leading to a power pole. <laughs> Alright, so here's the first of three poles we had installed in order to run power. So it's here, starting here up high above the stream, just under me is the stream, over to the side is the shed, and then over this way which you kind of can't see is the cabin. So we kind of had to run it in on an angle just because the main pole was right directly behind where I was just walking. So it comes straight in here, and then over the water and then it'll cut over that way to the cabin. So let's walk through the newly created path right here and I'll take you up the driveway to the next pole. So here's pole number two. Directly that way was the first pole. Here's number two. And then we head this way across the driveway to number three and then it'll connect straight to the house, the wires. Right up there on the hill is number three. And the reason that we had to, they, these two seem really close, but I think they can only run the wires, I think it's 28 feet. And to go from that one, that pole, all the way to the cabin was like 30 or 32. Like it was so close, but it was a little too far. So they dropped this one kind of here and we'll connect to it and then straight to the cabin from there. Then from the third pole right to here is where they're gonna run the last bit of wire to connect to the cabin. And this goes right inside to kind of where the kitchen is. Right by the water tank, like the yeah, the water tank, so then it'll all be in a closet together. So that's good. So we're super excited and it makes it, you know, we can totally see ourselves living here now. Like our last place, we were off grid for a few years, but it wasn't really that we chose to, it just kind of worked out that way. We were obviously in transition from military life to civilian life, didn't know what was gonna happen. Bought the land, built ourselves a little cabin that we knew we could afford no matter what happened. Over time we were able to put the poles in and run power and we were so thrilled about that but then like six months later we ended up selling the place so we've rebuilt this one. It's been almost two years now and uh, we wanted to have power so that when we move over here we have all the normal conveniences. We don't have to listen to generators if so if like our power units are dead we don't have to run generators to recharge them. We also plan to build a big garage like we did at our last place. So that's going to take a lot of power to be able to run tools and equipment to work on the vehicles and whatever else Jeremy wants to do. So that would take a lot of solar power which is going to cost a lot of money and to run these poles wasn't even two thousand dollars. I think it was like sixteen hundred dollars it was so much cheaper than investing in a bunch of solar panels and a whole solar setup that would be enough to power the house once we're living here full time to power a garage and anything else that we need so that's the reason we chose to take this route it was just a lot cheaper and so we already have a bunch of portable power generators which was how we were kind of running this place as we were working and they will always be so beneficial because being on grid we can make sure that they're always charged up so if the power goes out and we need them as a backup system they're always right there they're ready and they're fully charged ready to go so that's going to be awesome we'll have some in Jeremy's garage there as well they'll be all backed up and ready to go so we'll have a unit probably in the garage and in the house and it's just going to be it's awesome to have backup that's for sure and then in the event of like a full-blown like grid down all hell broke loose <laughs> yeah we have the wood stove which will obviously be used anyway but the wood stove you can cook on it heat water, do everything on it, heats the place. 
we have the berries, we have water there, we have a well, mm -hmm. we have a whole bunch of stuff. So the place would run that way too. So we like kind of have it in phases. So it's right. like, use what you can. That's why we always say like the modern homestead. Right. Use all the modern convenience you have. There's no reason to live like a pilgrim if you don't want to. Exactly. This is actually way cheaper than spending tons of money on solar if you're trying to have modern with money. Right. At least from our experience. And yeah, you're kind of good if it all goes downhill. Yeah, we have ten, 20 acres of trees that we could cut down and lots of animals to hunt. Yeah, there's lots of wildlife. And we're also surrounded by crown land, so we own uh, the 20 acres and then around us is just like a whole bunch of yeah. more woods, basically. You could see from the drone shots and everything. Yeah. So, pretty cool. It is. We like set it up. You can have all the normal. Worst case scenario, or I mean, next case scenario. We're still good to go with the normal. And then worst case scenario, we're still good to get it anyway. Yeah, if the world totally crumbles. Yeah, and then if it totally goes downhill, well, I'll just die here while I'm shooting somebody coming yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in reality, if that happens, just, just drop a nuke right directly on my head. <laughs> She needs a new one for the boat. Yeah. Yeah. And these torque wrenches are on sale. Oh, nice. Half inch drive. I'm gonna grab that. Thanks. Mine's kind of bending up weird. <laughs> it's a different style. It's not one you set on the handle like that. It's like got the fan at the top. I'm gonna get these for the bike. The okay. Ranger. Side by side. Great. We'll try them on those mounts. I think they'll fit. Nice. Let's roll.
someone can walk on up there. <laughs> no, it's still, Jojo's bed. It's still just pretty much nails. No. <laughs> It's a little warped, eh? It's Look at it. Alive. Yeah, right. You wanna hold that? Yeah. Just put your finger right there. Whatever later, we still gonna shove insulation up there. Yeah. On this side, the rock saw. Yep. So we'll okay. throw it up there later and then put another piece of wood. Yeah. There and then we will shove insulation in here later and put another board there and then up there probably sort some out too. I really have some blankets. Test it out. Yeah. for the blankets. Yeah. <laughs> there. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> it actually is pretty handy. Yeah. I have lots more stuff that can go up there. Take it out of the dressers, then we can actually put our clothes in the dressers. Yeah. That's cool. It's a start. Yeah. All right, so that's the start of like our little storage area. Areas we're actually going to do. So. Yeah. We totally were, forgot, actually. We mentioned those closets we were going to do. The one by the piano and the water and one by the hot water on demand. And then there's also, like, the, the clean out and a spot if we ever put a washer dryer there or whatever, too. So that's all there. So we still got to trim the ceiling, right? Like we did in the master bedroom. But we were gonna, when we were going to build the bulkheads... But what we got to do actually is build those closets before. Yeah. Because there's no need for the bulkheads to be going places if there's closets there. Yeah. And also there's no need for the trend to be running there without the closets too. So we were just about to start doing the bulkheads. Mm -hmm. When we realized we actually got to do the storage spots first. And then we'll do the bulkheads. So. Yeah. So yeah, so we got a bunch of 2x4s here. So it's probably not enough to do all of it. But we're going to get framing up those. Yeah, the closets. For so sure. it's actually we're going to do the closets next. Yeah. Yeah. So it's probably gonna be closets, pot lights. Oh yeah. Then the closet where the where the panels at. Right. Because the 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 water actually has to be wired into the panel still, because right now we're still running the water off of the power generator. So yeah. that's gonna be wired in. So it's like just wired hard, hard wired instead yeah. of on a plug. Yeah. So that's next. We're actually probably also going to have it wired on a plug, but it has to be wired in there too. Anyways, yeah. more about that later. But so then, so the pot lights and then that closet. Right, okay. And then the ball kits. Okay. And then, and the, then trim. the trim. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just like a whole bunch of random framing and stuff we're going to get done. But it's going to make it so much better. And we're kind of considering maybe, you know, we did that top part there. Kind of like how we did that storage there. We're kind of thinking maybe it might be best to give ourselves... Like, you know, we're going to do those bulkheads. Maybe just do small shelves mm -hmm. as bulkheads, kind of. So it's like a place you can store things, but you can also hide our, hide those and everything, yeah. too. Kind of like in campers, a lot of times, they have the higher storage spots, too. Yeah. Maybe yeah. something like that, and that gives us more space. You know, it's a small space. Yeah. And it gives us more space. Yeah, to just place things out of the way. Yeah. So well, That's a good idea, like campers. I like the... Yeah, that. we're kind of thinking maybe that's what we'll do. Mm -hmm. We'll take a peek in our little camper over there. You could even use some of those little doors maybe. Mm. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, but I think that may be kind of a cool way to do it. So yeah. there's probably like a whole bunch of little framing we're going to do. Yeah. That's, I think, roughly the order we're going in. So. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we'll see.